نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و حل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعلی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسالکا علما نافیا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا اللہم الہمنا رشدا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we will be talking about verse 58 and 59 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Verse 58, Allah says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا دْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةَ فَقُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْسُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدًا رَغَدًا وَاتْقُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُولُوا حِتَّةٌ نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خُتَايَاكُمْ وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And recall when we said, Enter this city and eat from it wherever you will, in ease and abundance, and enter the gate bowing humbly and say, Relieve us of our burdens. We will then do what? Forgive your sins for you, And we will increase the doers of good in goodness and reward. In verse 58, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating the happenings of Bani Israel. And the story of Bani Israel continues that when they were blessed with the ready-made easy food from heaven's the man and salwa so now instead of being grateful for all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is was giving them and they were receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were not grateful at all instead they were continuously complaining and they were continuously complaining that they were sick and they were bored out of eating just eating one kind of food as it is mentioned in verse 61 that they said la nasbira ala tu'amin wahid that we cannot survive on just one kind of food and you ask your sustainer to provide us with all forms of foods and different top, uh, types of eating things they asked hazrat musa alayhi salam to um, supplicate to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they get variable forms of dishes Now it was after this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them, in fact it was suggested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to do jihad and enter a city which was very close by to the place they were living and they were asked to do jihad and enter the city and uh, they will be uh, there they will be able to get all the eatable stuff they were wanting and they were asking for. instead of this heavenly man and salwa and allah in return also promised them that if they go ahead uh, doing jihad to enter the city allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them victory also and during all this allah ordered them that when with the order and with the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they came out victorious and they entered the city as conquerors allah ordered them to adopt two mannerisms and to do two things when they entered the city they were ordered number one what khulul baba sujjadaw that when you enter the city you enter the gates prostrating and bowing down before allah and the second thing was qulu hittatun that when you enter the gates of the city you say what you say hittatun Now when Allah ordered them to do these two things at the time of their victory, 
Allah also promised them that if you obey these two commandments of Allah, then Allah will do what? نغفر لكم خطاياكم Allah said that we will do what? We will forgive your sins for you. That is Allah promised them forgiveness. And second thing was, وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسَنِينَ That Allah promised that we'll be, we will increase the rewards of the doers of good. So, this is what the Bani Israel asked, that we are sick of eating a simple dish. We do not, we are not contented with a single dish. And then return, they were asked to an order to do jihad. And Allah promised them victory after the jihad. And when they conquered the city with the help of Allah and with the victory provided by Allah, they were asked to uh, prostrate and they were asked to announce hittatun. And in return, Allah promised them the forgiveness of their sins and increasing the rewards of their kind deeds also. Now, what do we learn from all this? The message of the verse and the message of all this uh, sequence is, number one, this uh, proves the excellence of prostration. How important and how excellent prostration as a deed is in the sight of Allah. The second thing is that when they were asked to prostrate when they en entered as conquerors, it means that after their victory and after their success, they were asked to do what? They were asked to accept and to realize and to acknowledge that conquest and success and victory is from whom? Nathrum min Allah. All forms of success and victories are by the order and by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Asking them to prostrate after their victory meant what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asking them to acknowledge the bounty of success, to be grateful to Allah, to do shukr. And the second thing which uh, was meant for them by prostration was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted that they should worship Allah. And they should be, they should be obedient to Allah. That is, after getting the victory with the help of Allah, they should be grateful to Allah. And second thing, they should worship Allah, and they should increase in their worships of Allah. And third is that they should be even more obedient to Allah, who who blessed them with the victory. And the fourth thing, which which we gain from here, which we learn from here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking them to prostrate actually wanted them to be humble and to avoid being proud and arrogant. So what we learn from here is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses any person with success, with victory or with any power or authority, what do we need to do? What does that person, victorious and successful person, need to do? To be grateful to Allah who blessed, to be more obedient to his benefactor, and to worship. And fourth is to be humble and to avoid all forms of arrogance. And this is what, exactly what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also taught Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because you know the teachings to all the prophets and all the followers of all the prophets was always the same because religion has always been Islam and the messages of Allah have always been the same to all the prophets and their followers. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was ordered in Surah Al-Kawthar when he was promised inna atwayna kal kawthar he, uh, he was promised the river of Kawthar and he was promised plentiful of uh, blessings and bounties and he was ordered what for swalli li rabbika wanhar that offer salah and make sacrifice so this is exactly what the people of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was ordered after success and after blessings and bounties the second thing is that they were asked to say hittatun hittatun means what it means forgiveness now we understand two things from this order of Hittatun after their success. 
The first is that Allah ordered them to seek forgiveness after their victory. What do we learn from here? The lesson is that when Allah blesses with victory or with success or with blessings, what are we needed to make? We are needed to seek forgiveness. This is exactly what Prophet ﷺ was also taught in Surah Nasr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned and when he promised the conquest of Makkah is Aja Nasrullahi wal Fat Waraita Nasa Yutkuluna Fidini Lahi Afaja. Then what was he expected to do? What was Prophet ordered to do after the conquest of Makkah? Fasabbih bihamdi Rabbika was tahfir that you glorify Allah and was tahfir you seek forgiveness. Now why does a person who is victorious or who is successful or who receives the blessings and bounties of Allah, why does that person need to seek forgiveness? You know why? Because while struggling for the worldly successes, for the worldly achievements, sometimes a person may sin, a person may do something wrong. And so we need to seek forgiveness. Secondly, when a person gets victorious, a person gets successful, there is a probability that the, that person may become arrogant and proud. So we need to seek forgiveness for this arrogance also. And the third thing is that once, once a person is successful and a person gets victorious, that even afterwards, even afterwards, in the spell of success and in the intoxication of victory, the person may further sin. So we need to make seeking forgiveness our habit. Once we succeed, once we achieve, once we are victorious, once we acquire the blessings and bounties of Allah, we need to do what? We need to seek forgiveness of Allah. And the second thing why they were told to say Hittatun was that they were ordered that after you conquer the city and after you enter the city victoriously, you behave you should behave as humble kind forgiving conquerors you need to forgive the people of the city and you have to enter as humble and kind and merciful and forgiving conquerors rather than being arrogant and cruel and hard-hearted tyrant rulers they were asked to announce the people of the conquered city that they would be forgiven that the people who were conquered, they will be forgiven and they will not be punished or persecuted after the victory of the conquerors. So now let me summarize that when a person receives the blessings of Allah, when a person gets successful in any sphere of life, how is he needed to behave how does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expect and want the blessed ones to behave you know we need to learn this not only learn but to adopt this mannerism allah desires from his bondsmen when he blesses them with worldly bounties and successes and achievements because we need to know and we need to remember that being blessed by Allah is actually a trial of Allah. That when a person is being blessed with success or achievements or blessings, he is actually being tried by Allah. He is actually being put into trial by Allah. Generally, generally people think that it is only, only when a person is exposed or subjected to hardships and crises of this world that the person is being trial. 
people generally relate hardships and crises as trial of the bondsman. Yes, no doubt. The person who is deprived, a person who has been put into hardships, and a person who has been subjected to different situations of crisis, no doubt he is being tried. And these are hardships and crises are trials of life. All people who are deprived, they are subjected to crises. They are being tried by Allah. Allah wants to see that in this, in this situation of hardship, is the person still grateful to Allah? And is the, patient, is the person still patient with the will of Allah? But remember that it is not only hardships of life which, which is a trial. People who are blessed are also being tried. Generally, we fail to realize this. We just fail to relate and realize that the condition we are being blessed with is also a trial from Allah. And when people are being blessed with the bounties and blessings of Allah, it is generally just thought that Allah is pleased with us. And Allah out of his sheer player with us is being kind to us and being merciful to us. Yes, it might be so. But it doesn't mean that it is always like that. So first what I would need to highlight is that firstly we need to remember that receiving the blessings of Allah does not necessarily mean that Allah is pleased when a person is receiving the blessings of Allah that necessarily does not mean that Allah is pleased with the person the worldly blessings are actually no criteria they are no merit to check the player of Allah with his bronzemen because you've you must have seen that the people who are non-believers, the disobedients, the transgressors, even they, even they are blessed with the worldly riches of gold, of money. They also have properties and authorities and power. And there are many situations when you will observe that the believers, the obedients, the righteous, the God-fearing people, they are deprived and they are in conditions of hardships and they have situations of crises in their lives. So remember, having the blessings of this world does not necessarily signify the player of Allah. And having hardships in this life and going through crises in this life does not necessarily imply the displeasure of Allah or the wrath of Allah. Because both of these conditions, having the blessings of Allah and going through the hardships of life, both these conditions are actually what? They are trials of this worldly life. As Allah says in Surah Mulk, خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala. Allah says, I created life and death to put you into trial. Liyabluwakum, to try you, to put you into trial, and then to test who does what? Ahsanu amala, who does the righteous deeds, who does the deeds which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. So this life as a whole is trial. And we need to comprehend. That when a person on whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering his blessings is also being tried. Worldly blessings, all the worldly blessings of success, of conquest, the worldly powers, the authority, the riches, they are, they are our assignments. They are the papers of this examination hall. So how do we solve these assignments? 
for success in hereafter is what we need to know and realize and comprehend and then adopt for success in hereafter. Now, how do we need to solve this, these papers of trial? We, we gather these from different verses of the Quran. And now here I will summarize what we learn from these different verses of Quran. I will summarize for you as to how we are expected to behave when we receive the bounties and blessings of Allah. So the number, the first thing is remembrance of Allah. Remembrance of Allah, zikr. Whenever we receive any bounty and blessing of Allah, whenever we are successful, whenever we achieve something, some form of success in life, the first thing we need to do is what? Alhamdulillah. Remember Allah. Praise Allah. Glorify Allah. Remember Allah in our hearts and keep our tongues supple with His with His praise and glory. For He is our benefactor. It is because of Him, His mercy, why we have achieved, why we were successful and why we were blessed. And just not that, remembering in our hearts and keeping our tongue supple with his zikr, we also need to mention and we need to talk about that this blessing and this success, we have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to remember and we need to talk and mention about this. So this is the first thing which we need to do when we receive the blessings of Allah. The second thing is to acknowledge, to acknowledge and to accept the blessings and successes given to us by Allah. This is what? Gratitude and shukr. And this gratitude is in our hearts by the word of our mouth and by our behavior. And when we receive the blessings of Allah, Gratitude by our behavior means what? Gratitude by our behavior and mannerism means that we will use the blessings according to the orders of Allah, according to the commandments of likes of Allah, and according to the limits of Allah. We will not use these blessings in a way which Allah will be displeased, in a way which is not permissible to us by Allah. So this is actually the right form of gratitude after we receive the blessings of Allah. And the third thing a person who is blessed by the blessings of Allah needs to do is avoid, avoid and say no to all forms of arrogance and takabur. Being successful or having achieved we we surely and definitely need to avoid thinking that it is because of my own struggle. What I have achieved and what I have acquired is because of my struggle, my efforts, my skill, my talents or my hard work. No, we don't have to think my work or my talent. We have to stop thinking that I am very sharp, I am very bright, I was very skillful and hard working so I achieved. No, no to all these frames of minds. Instead, we need to believe, we need to think that is all the blessing of Allah. And moreover, we need to believe that the skill, the talent, the ability to work hard was also a blessing of Allah. The knowledge and the skill was granted to me by Allah. The healthy body which helped me work hard to strive and struggle was also a blessing of Allah. It is not me who acquired and achieved. It is He 
who blessed and who was kind to bless. So we, not, we are not going to be arrogant after we achieve. We are not going to be proud after any success. We are going to be humble. We are going to be humble. Humbled to Allah and humbled to our fellow beings. We are not going to get arrogant in, around our fellow beings also that we are one up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us, help us all, guide us all, and save us all from any form of arrogance. And the fourth thing is self-control. Self-control, because after any form of success or achievement, a person is liable to lose self-control. There is a beautiful supplication of Azza Sulaiman mentioned in the Quran. He was, he was blessed with so many successes and riches. He had, he had a very big garment. He had power. He had authority. He had knowledge. He had skill. And what did he ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rabbi awzirni. Rabbi awzirni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an a'mal aswalihan tarzwahu wa adkhilli bi rahmatika fi ibadika aswalihin Beautiful words of Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam. He said, O oh Allah, bless me with self-control. Awzirni. Keep me in self-control that I may be grateful for the bounties you've blessed me and my parents. And that I do deeds after being blessed, I do deeds, virtuous deeds that may please you. And help me, help me and gather me with your righteous people. So this is exactly we need to behave and relate after being successful in our lives. After being blessed in our lives. After achieving what we wanted to in our lives. Stay in a state of self-control. And you, need, you see how extensive gratitude does a bondsman need to be? We need to be grateful for the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showered on us and even on our parents. And then when we are blessed, we need to be, we need to do what sorts of deeds? Deeds which will please Allah, our benefactor. And then when we are blessed with the bounties of Allah and when we are successful, we need to be we need to be God-fearing and we need to have fear of hereafter and we need to have the desire and to work for and to struggle after achievements to acquire successes of hereafter also. After being successful in this worldly life, we need to be even more successful. We need to be even more careful and God-fearing about the successes of hereafter also. And the fourth thing is to avoid getting, fifth thing is to avoid after any success or achievements, to avoid getting selfish and greedy and lustful about the blessings, to avoid miserliness and to, to spend the blessings to spend these blessings for the service of mankind and for the service of the religion, for the preaching and teaching of Quran, so that all the blessings we've achieved and all the successes we've achieved, the power, the authority, the riches we've got and we've we've been successful to acquire become what? Walbaqiyatu Swalihat. They become a source of virtue and they become a source of acquiring Jannah for us. And remember, after getting self-control, after getting successful, a person is very, very liable to get out of control, indulging in all the prohibited, 
all the prohibited activities. The person might just start showing off, riya, boosting off. The person might just become wasteful, wasting spending money, time on, on all the things spending money on all the things which are not permissible and they are not and they are haram they are prohibited like gambling and drinking and adultery the person having having successful having acquired success and having achieved and rising in the world may start indulging in all these things and lose self control so that is what we need to do and last but not the least as here we've been ordered that when a person is successful and a person achieves we need to do what for subbih bihamdi rabbika wastaghfir we need to praise allah we need to glorify allah and then we need to do what we need to seek forgiveness we need to seek forgiveness for all the all the limits a person might have crossed while achieving or all the disobedience we might have done after receiving and acquiring the achievement for all the arrogance which might have developed after the achievement and for all the transgressions which might have happened during acquiring the success so we need to do what we need to do remembrance and zikr we need to do gratitude and shukr we need to avoid takabbur and arrogance and be humble we need to exercise and being even more careful regarding our self control and we need to seek forgiveness so this is how when we are put to trial of blessings we need to relate according to the teachings of quran and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them that if after the blessing of victory and success if you are grateful and you show gratitude and you are obedient and you worship allah and you increase in obedience after success you are merciful and you are kind and you are forgiving and you are humble and humane then allah will be merciful and kind to you and allah in his mercy will forgive your sins and allah will reward you for your kindness fully allahumma ja'alni saburan wa ja'alni shukura wa ja'alni fi ayni saghira wa fi ayunin nasi kabira rabbi ayni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an a'mala salihan tarzwahu wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika as-salihin verse number 59 Allah says فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِجْزًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا قَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Allah says but those who wronged he they did what did they change those words to the statement other than that that which had been said to them so allah did what allah says so we sent down upon those who had wronged a punishment from the sky why because they were disobedient so now the discussion of the happenings of bani israel continues and in this verse Allah has explained that how the disobedient Bani Israel behaved after they were ordered to make jihad and they were promised victory and when they conquered they were asked to do prostration and say hittatun 
And then Allah promised them that they will be blessed by forgiveness and with a fulfilled reward of their kindness. So how did they behave to all these orders and all these commandments and all these limits and all these promises? How did they rely and how did they behave? Now Allah says, they did exactly opposite to what they were ordered to. And how did they oppose to the orders of Allah? Instead of being thankful and grateful to Allah, they were totally complaining and they were thankless. They, instead of being obedient, were even more disobedient. Instead of being humbled when they entered the city, they were arrogant and they entered as arrogant, pompous conquerors. Instead of accepting all their sins and all their transgressions and all their disobedience and then regretting and asking for forgiveness, they stuck up to their disobedience. They were stubbornly and they were obstinately continuing in their condition of disobedience. Instead of forgiving the conquered people and becoming kind and merciful to them, they were harsh and they were hard on them. Instead of saying, Hittatun, they said what? They said, Hintatun. This word, Hintatun, although it sounded very similar to Hittatun, but it had an entirely different meaning. And it attributed to an entirely different behavior and mannerism also. Hittatun means forgiveness. And Hintatun means oats and barley and wheat. It actually meant what? That they were asked to say Hittatun to the people when they entered the city. And they were asked to forgive the people. And they were asked to tell the people of the city that we will be forgiving you, we will be merciful to you, we will be kind to you, we will not torture, we'll torture you, persecute you or punish you just because we've conquered you. They were asked to be kind to them. But instead of saying Hittatun, they changed the word to Hintatun. They rather than being merciful and forgiving, they started demanding the people to pay tax in form of wheat and oats and barley. In, in form of tax, in form of their agricultural produce. So instead of being merciful and forgiving, they were demanding, they were harsh, they were hard, they were torturing, and they were harsh, tyrant rulers and conquerors. So, if we summarize, that they were totally disobedient, and they behaved exactly contrary to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked them to do. So what happened then? Allah says, in return, they were punished by Allah. They were punished by what? Rijzam mina samai bima kanu yafsukun. They were punished by rids from the skies. Rids means what? Rids means severe. Severe and intense filth and impurity. So they were subjected to a torment of intense impurity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was this? We learn that they were exposed and they were they got in an epidemic of plague. Plague broke in the people of Bani Israel who were disobedient to Allah. And we all know that Plague is an infectious, it is a contagious disease which is, uh, which is spread through the mice. And mice, they grow on filth and dirt. So they were, they were punished with an epidemic of plague because of dirt and filth. So the message for all of us is that when individuals, when families, when societies, when nations, they disobey 
and they dare, they just dare to change the commandments of Allah. I repeat that when people or when families or when societies or nations or countries, they disobey Allah and they dare and they challenge to change the commandments and orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are punished and they are subjected to punishments and torments of Allah like they were punished by an epidemic of plague. Don't we realize and don't we analyze our situations? We are being punished. We are being currently punished not by an epidemic, by a pandemic, an internationally spreading pandemic has, has really this is the worst form of pandemic which is struck internationally. It is because of the disobedience. It is because of the transgressions to Allah. Because the people, they are daring to change the commandments and the rules and the regulations and the limits of Allah. And then if you look at the state of affairs, there's all form of filth. There's all form of actual filth. Look around yourselves. Our streets, our roads, our rivers, our streams, they are full of litter and garbage. They are full of filth. The biggest cities, one of the biggest cities, Karachi, it is full of filth. And that is the biggest issue of the country. There is filth all around us. And moreover, there is filth of immorality. There is lack of chastity and modesty. There is adultery. There is filth in the media. There is filth in the advertisements, in the signboards, in the literature. Filthy media, filthy advertisements, filthy signboards on our streets. Filthy literature. And then there is filth and dirt of cheating and lying and fraud and stealing and killing and looting and plundering and filthy business dealings and filth, filth in the language, in the way people talk, filthy gaze, filth in the hearts. Hearts are full. The hearts are full of the filth of lust, of lust, of money, of desires of the world, of so many filthy, dirty feelings that we filled up our hearts. So why don't we realize that we are being punished? These are all the punishments of Allah. If we want to get rid of all these filths, these physical filths, and all these filthy behaviors and all these filthy mannerisms, we need to work practically also. We need to physically eradicate and we need to physically work for cleanliness also. We need to remove the garbage and the litter also. But actually we need to eradicate this disobedience. We need to get rid of this transgression. We need to educate the people about the teachings of Qur'an, about the messages of Prophet ﷺ to get rid of all these, to get rid of all these torments and punishments of Allah. Allahumma ghfir lana wa lil mu'mineena wal mu'minaat wal muslimina wal muslimaat Allahumma alif bayna qulubihim wa aslih zata baynihim وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم لعن القفرة الذين يسدون عن سبيلك يقذبون رسلك ويقاتلون أولياءك اللهم خالف بين قلمتهم وزلزل أقدامهم وأنزل بهم بأسق الذي لا ترده عن القوم المجرمين آمين سمامين 
ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين امين ثم امين